Welcome back. And today we are going to be studying LDR brachy room shielding. Now, whether you are studying for ADR part three or just to broaden your medical physics knowledge, it's important to know how each of the different machines, such as LDR, HDR, linear accelerators, gamma knives, the shielding process for them and what goes into it, and ideally some typical shieldings for each one. So you may get a question on your test that may be what equation governs the LDR brachy room shielding? How do you find the workload specifically for low dose rate? What is the typical shielding amount? And then what type of equipment generally would you need in a LDR suite? So to begin, let's talk about the equation. Now this as similar to the other questions and shielding, you are going to look at B equals PD squared over WT. Remember, because we are working with brachytherapy, the use factor is equal to one because it's isotropic. The PD and T are all similar. Occupancy factor, permissible dose, and distance squared, those are exactly the same terms. However, workload, we are going to find this differently than some of the other machines that we are dealing with. So workload to define this is going to be the equation I remember is RFQ. Now, some of these variables can be different, but you're ultimately doing the same thing. First, you want to find the exposure rate. And this is, of course, by nuclide that you'll be using. So the exposure rate, we can just use a simple equation of A gamma over R squared. Now, the activity is in millicury. The exposure rate constant, these, I typically use the standard R cm squared per millicury hour. That, that's my favorite, but there are some others. And then the radius here, you would just want to put in CM. And so ultimately on the bottom, you would get CM squared. Now, for example, if you were using cesium-137, I'll keep talking about this example because it's one of the most commonly used nuclides and it's kind of old school too. So it's something you very well may see on your exam. That would be equal to 3.26. It's very good to memorize a lot of the most popular nuclides in the exposure rate constant. It shows that you have a broad depth of knowledge in medical physics and practical, tangible experience. So that is your exposure rate. Now you are going to, I'm gonna jump down here. I'm gonna talk about F. Now this is the F factor. So this for specifically the cesium-137 is going to be just 0.97 centigrade per Rankin. Now, these are somewhat similar to each other, but if you have the brain space, memorizing these for the common nuclides would also just, again, show that depth of knowledge that you have. And then finally, Q, this is something we definitely don't have with HDR or Linux, things of that nature. That is the patient transmission factor. Let me just write that down here. So now this is the amount of transmission and attenuation that the patient provides. So for cesium-137 again, that value is 0.8, meaning that this is 80% attenuated and it is going to be based on nuclide because of the energy, things of that nature. So that is how you're going to find workload for LDR. And remember that's a workload one meter from the source. So now the typical shielding, how do you determine it and what is it? So like our other shieldings, we are just going to use N equals negative log B. And that is going to give us how many TVLs we need. One TVL for cesium-137 is equal to 2.5 cm of lead. And then just through practical experience, and especially if you're studying for a test, it's good to just kind of memorize the shielding requirements for a lot of the different machines. And for LDR, we are looking at around 3 cm of lead. So circle that, something you definitely want to remember. And then finally, what equipment do you need in an LDR suite? 
think about it tangibly, how you would do assays, what you would need in that LDR suite. So you would want an emergency pig if for some reason you would need to put a new Clyde in there. You would want a visitor chair. You would want a Geiger counter. You would want a movable lead shield. Be sure to have a stopwatch, all the emergency equipment. And that is ultimately the basis of LDR breaky room shielding. If you have any questions, please comment below. I will help where I can. Best of luck studying and we'll see you in the next one.